Greetings, everyone. Let me introduce you to the dramatic Diamond Craters. Diamond Craters is a hidden natural treasure located in a remote area of the southeastern Oregon desert between the town of Burns and Steens Mountain Range. This outstanding natural area is on public land managed by the U.S. Bureau of Land Management. The BLM has published a self-guided auditor pamphlet titled Diamond Craters, Oregon's Geologic Gem, which is out of print, but it's available online. Diamond Craters is unique and special in that it contains an abundant and wide variety of young volcanic features, all concentrated into a relatively small area, only about six kilometers wide. Volcanic activity started here about 25,000 years ago and ended around seven to 8,000 years ago. Here's a map showing the main features at Diamond Craters. The center of the Diamond Craters area is pushed up into several lava domes by the lateral injection of magma into the subsurface, filling the different dome structures. Many explosive volcanic craters formed when rising hot magma encountered shallow groundwater, creating powerful steam explosions that left behind depression craters rimmed with ejecta upon the surface. Two excellent examples of explosion craters lie along the auto tour route at Big Bomb and Red Bomb craters. Multiple explosion craters also developed in this area when underground molten magma explosively interacted with the shallow groundwater. Today, much of Diamond Craters is blanketed with basaltic pumice, cinders, and ash ejected from these explosion craters. Shown here is Red Bomb Crater, nearly 1,000 feet in diameter. Visible on the crater rim walls are multiple layers of red pumice and tephra ejected out of the crater during eruptions. When hot basaltic magma rose through the older water-saturated rock layers beneath the south dome, the violent steam eruption sent the hot magma and broken rock upward before raining down around the vents. Here we're looking down onto the collapsed central crater caldera at Diamond Craters. Since 25,000 years ago, one huge explosion likely created this collapsed caldera, followed later by up to 30 small funnel-shaped explosion craters inside the caldera. Since then, a few basaltic lava flows have leaked out onto the floor of the caldera. At Robin Dome are older basalt flows that were pushed up by the intruding magma. As the brittle basalt was stretched, it fractured into a series of narrow, parallel fault blocks over the top of the dome. Another volcanic feature, known as Amar, spelled M-A-A-R, is represented at the Twin Craters. These large and deep craters formed underground when a pair of adjacent volcanic eruptions occurred in the subsurface. These craters, however, lacked a well-defined rim of ash and cinders found around other crater rims. Instead, only a limited number of rock fragments and boulders lie around the rims of the twin craters. The last period of volcanism around seven to 8,000 years ago, produced only basaltic lava without any of the explosive activity previously associated with groundwater interactions. 
One of the most recent lava flows came from Lava Pit Crater within the southeastern segment of the volcanic complex. Multiple eruptions of lava occurred here based on the number of lava flow lobes and differing amounts of vegetation growing atop the flows. Notice the ropey nature of the once fluid lava flow called Pahoyhoy as it spread out away from the crater. Also notice the Tamuli, that's spelled T-U-M-U-L-I. These are ridges of basalt lava that pushed up from below, while some of the still molten lava continued to flow and expand beneath the solidified crust. Thanks for input from volcanologists David Sherrod and Vic Camp, and thank you for watching.